in the park I saw Daddy with a laughing little girl that he was swinging. And I stopped beside a Sunday school, listened to the songs that they were singing. Then I went on down the road and saw That's Mr. Brown. That's him. The bell was ringing. And it echoed through the canyon like a disappearing dream of yesterday. On a Sunday morning sidewalk, I'm wishing, Lord, that I was stoned. Cause there's something about a Sunday. This looks good. That makes the body feel. Things all right? Oh, sure. I miss lunch. Make seven holes. Half as long as the mass of sound. That looks good. Yeah, have some. Things all right? Mm -hmm. And Sunday morning coming down. Say, that's delicious. I never tasted chili like that before. That special recipe made out of squirrel meat. That's good, ain't it? Mm. Yeah, that explains it. Hey, Luke, I thought you were riding back with us. Where you been? I've been to get the cops to find out how you killed Edna. You going crazy. You did it. You know you did it. You killed both of them. You're fired. Get out of here. You crazy? Get him out of here. What's the matter with you? You crazy? Ah, get him out. Boy. Mr. Brown, I'm terribly sorry about this. this. Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Colombo. I'm from the LAPD homicide. Homicide? What's he been telling you about me? Well, if we could just talk privately, there's nothing to get excited about. Just want to ask some routine questions. Ain't no need for everything to stop. I'll be right back. Let me see that guitar. If he's busted that guitar, I'm gonna bust his neck. Come on in here. Nothing to get excited about, folks. Mr. Brown, be right out. What did he mean, murder? And why am I talking to somebody from homicide? I feel terrible about this, sir. I mean, an awful thing that was. And uh, there was just no way for me to prevent your brother-in-law from coming here. Now, you know, maybe I could have anticipated that. Okay, just that, tell me what it's all about. What's he been it's saying nothing about? to get excited about, sir, believe me. You just have to understand that uh, when a member of the family makes a complaint, well, we just have to go through certain formalities, ask questions, and. Uh, uh, make out a report. And I guess this, all this looks kind of bad, huh? This, this big house and this party going on, everything? No, sir. No, sir, it's kind of refreshing. You see, in my line of work, homicide, somebody is always, well, dead. That's the only way to put it. I mean, they don't even call us in unless that's what it is, somebody dead. So naturally, I see a lot of grief. Now, look, Lieutenant, I'm not going to try to tell you that Edna and I didn't quarrel. You can't, you can't go through a day with Edna without quarreling. You didn't know Edna. The crusade, I was all for the crusade. It's just that I thought a little something ought to go to me for what I do, you know? I give it full, I give it all my time. The dirty hotel rooms, the Mr. dirty Brown. dressing rooms, the stale coffee. Mr. Brown, I'm not here to pry into your personal life. My personal life is an open book. Everybody knows I've done time. Yes, sir. But what you've done since you've gotten out, that's been an inspiration to a lot of people. Then what are you bugging me for? Well, like I said, just ask a few routine questions. But I can come back another time when you're more settled. Go ahead. Ask your questions. Are you sure it's all right? 
Get it over with. You don't mind? Go right ahead. I'll try and make it very fast. I was up there at the crash site, and I was talking to, uh, that fellow, Mr. Pangborn, up there. You want some coffee? No, thank you very much. We were both wondering why your seatbelt wasn't fastened at the time of the crash. Oh, that. Well, you see, when the power went off, the lights went out. And I reached across to the glove compartment to try to get a flashlight, and to do that, I had to unbuckle my seatbelt. That's when I lost control. Well, that explains it. I'll tell Mr. Okay. Pangborn that so that he won't bother you about it, too. Thanks. What else can I tell you now? You have a pencil? No. That's all right. I'll remember. Oh. The navigation kit. What about it? There were no ashes in it, you see. So we were uh, we were wondering what happened to the charts and the and the maps that were in it. Well, when the power went off, the defroster quit working. See, so I slid open a window to try to see where I was going, and the suction sucked all the maps and papers and everything right out the window. Big suction. I'll tell that to Mr. Pangborn, too. We were both wondering. Thanks. I, I appreciate that. That does it. You sure made me move, Mr. Brown. I never asked questions this fast before in my life. I always think it's kind of impolite to keep firing questions at people. If that's your job. That's what you ought to do. Mm-hmm. Sorry about what happened out there, and I sure hope your guitar is all right. It's a beauty. Yeah. Not another guitar in the world with a tone like that. It's a great guitar, handmade. When I take an airliner, I get an extra seat and sit it right beside me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Lucky thing I wasn't on that plane with you last night. Yeah, I know. That was a break, all right? I've been worried about that. Worried about crashing with it? No, about... Um, about it coming unglued or cracking it at high altitudes in an unpressurized plane. Look at this guitar. You see the, it's put together with a very special glue, different pieces of wood. It looks like one piece, but feel of that belly. Feel how smooth it is on that back there. Well, the changes in pressure and altitude can affect a good guitar like that, ruin the tone. So, I told Luke to put it on the bus. You know, I'm very happy you told me that. Why is that? Well, you know, that's what started your brother-in-law thinking that you had something to do with murdering his sister. The fact that you parted with your guitar. He said that was the first time he ever did that. Then I'm glad I told you, too. <laughs> that winds it up. We'll probably just go along with Mr. Pangborn's report. Mr. Pangborn's report will make me look bad enough. That's a lousy piece of flying I did. Well, let's hope I stumble on something so it doesn't look so much like pilot error. And if I do, I'll let you know. You're not finished? Oh, just a couple of little things for my own report down in headquarters. Nothing to worry you about, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate your taking the time. Glad to. Let me know when I can help you. Just one more thing. 